Now we've gone over routing to pages, but we can also route to endpoints, which are server-side routes. Endpoints provide backend functionality within our Svelkit application, making them a great place to say, reach out to an external API. Endpoints are modules written in JavaScript or TypeScript files that export functions corresponding to HTTP methods. These endpoint files become API routes in our application. So for example, our sticker product might request data from slash product slash sticker, which could be represented by the endpoint src slash routes slash product slash sticker.js. So let's go ahead and create this file within our product folder called sticker.js. This will trigger the creation of an endpoint, which is basically a server side route for our app. Since this is technically a route, we keep our endpoints in our routes folder. The first thing you're probably noticing is the interesting file name we gave our endpoint. Firstly, rather than ending in .svelte like our previous page files, our endpoint ends in .js. This is because as I already mentioned, endpoints are written in .js or .ts files. Now, if we wanted to, we could also add a file extension before the .js like this, which just tells us the type of data that will be returned from the endpoint. So altogether, our file name is saying that we have an endpoint at slash product slash sticker because it follows the same routing structure as our site that is written in a JavaScript file and will return JSON data. Now, this extra file extension is optional, so I'm going to go ahead and choose not to add it for this example. You'll see why in a bit. As I mentioned earlier, endpoints export functions corresponding to HTTP methods. So for example, within this file, we could export a get post patch or any valid HTTP method. However, since delete is a reserved word in JavaScript, the delete requests are handled with a del function. Endpoints also have access to fetch in case you need to request data from external APIs. So for example, within our endpoint file, we can make a get request on this route by exporting an async function called get like this. Now we can reach out to a database and retrieve some data. Since we don't have a database set up, I'll instead just return an object with some hard-coded data representing the response. So in our example, let's declare our value product and return our product in our body like this. Now this is the basics of what might be returned by an endpoint. Remember, this is server-side, so it will not be available to the client where you typically don't want to use any sensitive information for security reasons. Now, I mentioned that endpoints are serverless routes. Endpoints follow the same routing structure as our site, so just like with our page components, our endpoint routes are determined based on the name of the file. So we can visit this endpoint page just like we would a normal route. So let's hit save, and now we can view the JSON data being returned by this endpoint. And again, this is generated server side, so we can reach out directly to a database and use sensitive information here. Now, currently our endpoint is only returning our sticker data, but we want it to use a dynamic parameter, just like our product page does, to dynamically fetch data associated with whatever product page we're currently on. We are able to use dynamic parameters with our endpoints the same way we use them with pages. So let's update our endpoint name to name.svelte, where name is the dynamic parameter, so it will once again be within square brackets. Now we have a dynamic name parameter and our method accepts an object of parameters. So in this case, we can access our dynamic name by passing in params and using it like this. If we log our name and check our server, we see the dynamic param name is being logged. So now we could use this to reach out to a database and fetch data associated with this specific product. Now we don't have a database set up, but for the sake of example, that might look something like this. But I'm going to go ahead and hard code an array of products and use our dynamic param to search this array and return the correct product to sort of mock a database. Now that we have our endpoint set up, let's actually use it to display the correct data on the page. And notice the name of our endpoint is the same as a page that we want to display this data in. Anytime the endpoint's file name is the same as a page, except for the extension, of course, the page gets its props from the endpoint. We call these page endpoints and they allow you to simply pass in props directly from the endpoint. Now, if you remember in the beginning of this video, I opted not to use the .json file extension. And this is because that can only be used with standalone endpoints. But in this case, we're using a page endpoint. I will talk a little bit more about standalone endpoints in the next video when we go over the load function. So looking back at our endpoint, we're returning our body, which contains a single value product. And this product is what allows us to have props passed directly into the page. So back at our page, we can simply write export let product within our script. 
Now we can delete our product variable, products array, and our reactive statement here, since this information is now coming from the endpoint. If we save this, we see that the correct product is still being displayed. Let's change the route to a new product, and again we see the page's data is being updated. So as you can see, page endpoints make it extremely simple to do anything server-side by simply exporting a get function. But what if you want to reach out to this endpoint from a page with a different name than the endpoint? To do that, you'll have to use the load function, which I'll go over in the next video. I'll see you there.